Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to episode 7 of the Tamiya F4B Phantom build. Now in part 6, we focused on the exhausts and the landing gear. And now that that's all wrapped up, it's time to move into actually dealing with the airframe itself and getting it all ready for primer and paint. You can see a good chunk of it's already been primed and kind of sanded back in places. But we still have a little bit of work to do. So... There are two main focus points that I have for this episode. The first of them is just the bodywork that needs to be done to remove a couple seams in places. And the second is focused on the cockpit area. Uh, mainly we need to get the combing sorted out. We need to get a couple little handles placed along the sill deck. And we need to get the sill deck installed and back cover here knocked out and a few other fun things like that. So... Anyway, let's get into it and start with some of the bodywork. As you can see, we've got two super glue lines on either side of the intakes here. These are just these are really pesky areas to get nice and flat. And I've gone through with some epoxy putty already, but it didn't quite get the job done. So we're on to some black super glue, which in my experience sands a whole lot easier than regular CA. And we've also got some back here that also need sorting out and it's always fun to get in these little tiny spaces with uh you know the right abrasive to remove that without marring all the detail because i suck at rescribing things you know a, a line here and there is easy but small level detail nah it's not my thing so how do we deal with these well first of all sanding sticks i prefer the you know, the tougher ones are still not ideal. Like, if I had a little tiny, tiny uh, version of those glass files I've been using, that would be great for this stuff. But at the same time, this is, you know, this portion right here is on a curve. This portion is on a flat. So you got to kind of, like, you know, find what works and where. But let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. There we go. So, yeah, basically just this stretch right here. And a lot of this is probably going to have to happen off camera just because this is a weird angle to hold shit at and it wants to keep focusing in the wrong place. But basically just going kind of across the grain here. See the, the black CA does cut down quite nicely. thinner stick like this, or even some thinner ones, really helps get in there without having to deal with all the other shit around it. Yay us. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's see if I can find another way to hold this where I can actually see it more reliably. So I love this camera, but the, the focusing... I wish there was a way it could like focus based on where my eye is. That would be awesome. Because if you do just like a set focus point, well, I can't hold the damn thing in the right place. And it just likes to guess what I'm trying to focus at. Even when I set a focus point, it's a pretty large focus area, so it still just kind of shifts all over the place on me without a whole lot of control. So you're getting a really good view of the inside of the flapper on there. It's awesome. And come in here and just balance this out with a bit of sanding sponge. I think this is 1000 grit Tamiya sponge. They are kind enough to print the grit on the back, so you at least can like re retain some idea of what the hell you're doing. That's the one thing I don't like about the Infini stick or the Infini sponges is there's nothing on the back. So once you start cutting little pieces off of it, it's hard to remember which one is which. But that looks pretty nice. Let's flippity flop over here. 
basically the same idea. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this out and then we'll move on to the intake areas. Okay, so I've knocked back the seams on the aft fuselage here. Not sure if they are fully dealt with or not. We'll have to wait until we can spot prime and see what's up. But they're looking pretty good for the moment. So now it's on to this fun shit up here by the intakes. This is going to be kind of the same process, except I'm going to be using some different parts of the sanding stick. Emily. This is when we're going to rely on some uh, Mr. Surfacer to get us out of scratch town. The coarse grid of this stuff is not the smoothest. But it's really good at handling the CA. And then... I know some people just like to sand it all and then rescribe and restore all the detail. I would rather just be a little bit more careful with my sanding and not have to deal with restoration. Something I can do if I have to do, but fuck, I hate it. So, cool. My finger's not picking up anything when I do a scratch test there. We can go in and smooth it out a bit by sanding the other way with medium grit. Yay us. And a little bit of sanding sponge. Okay, so that's looking like it's in a decent spot. Now we need to move over to the other side and do the same thing. And then I'll come back with sandpaper and we'll get that little tiny bit in that little crease. Okay, so to hit those little bits on the inside that are difficult as fuck to hit, I've got a piece of sandpaper and I've got this cool aluminum sanding stick thing. So basically all you do is just wrap that shit around there like that, pinch it, right side for this to be effective then you just get in there with it nothing to it Okay, so it took a couple of rinse and repeats, but I think we're finally to the place where the bodywork is looking mostly good. Back here behind the wing, up here with the little area forward of the leading edge on the intake. That is nice and cleaned up. I do think I want to go back in here, though, with a scriber and just reestablish that lower line of that panel. The forward scoops are looking good area on top of the intakes right here is all looking good especially considering it's going to have the you know the walkways on it so it's not that big of a deal and over here we've kind of got the same stuff going on everything's looking pretty nice so yay us now it is time to move on to sorting out the cockpit area and that needs to begin with the instrument panel combing and the radar site. So it wasn't technically a HUD. So this little doohickey basically is black, but it's like a 
dirty black, you know, dust accumulated there. It's kind of like the the top of the dashboard on your car if you, you know, are like me and haven't washed the damn thing in forever. Dust gets up there. Stuff blows in when you open the canopy and just kind of accumulates there and it's tough to reach. So, yeah, it just gets kind of icky. So we need to do that. We need to paint the areas here for the radar scope and this little dot. To me, it says to paint them white, but uh, fuck no, that's not going to happen. I need to go and do a quick bit of searching to see what this thing looks like, if it's a dial or if it's something else, and that'll dictate how I treat that. This one up here, they say to paint it white, but looking at the reference photos, I, no. Um, I'm probably going to paint the area around it like a dark, dark metal. So maybe a magnesium or like a steel mixed with black. And then that center section there is essentially just going to get probably a clear on top of it. I might put a little bit of colored in, color in it just to tint it up. But, I mean, it's basically dark with glass on top is all it is. And then we've got a clear part that slots on top that I also need to paint up. Just like the framing of it. So, no big deal. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Well, after consulting a few reference images, it turns out this thing is sort of a white. It's like a milky, yellowy, off-white type of color. So for that, I have mixed up a little blend of paints, starting with Vallejo off-white, adding a few drops of scale color Moonray Flesh, that lovely thing right there, and then just to make it a little bit more sickly looking, some AK Gen 3 APC interior light green, which gets us to this color right here. And I've added a few drops of water, nothing fancy. And because I don't trust myself with a brush with this, we are going to Q-tip. Er, and because I don't trust myself with a brush with this, we are going to toothpick it. Now tackling the site, rather than try to brush paint this and fucking it all up, I'm going to mask it and airbrush it. And for this I'm using some strips of teensy tiny one millimeter Tamiya tape, which is kind of a pain to get started, but once it gets started it's great, super useful stuff. At these small sizes, it likes to stick to the tweezers more than the plastic. Now, I'm leaving this thing on the tree for the moment because this little outer knob here is supposed to be silver. So. Give myself some room to play, and that's going to be easy to paint after the fact. So, there we go. Fire up the airbrush and make this thing black, or not quite black. Okay, so now I've got some MRP black primer in the airbrush, and we're just going to very, very slowly build this up. Low PSI, all those standard best practices. Uh, one dicey bit about this is we do need to spray edge on. Again, I'm going to hope that uh, the low PSI and the fact that I've already sprayed some will come to our rescue there. And that's pretty much it for painting that black. Nothing fancy. Uh, I'm not going to bother with making it like a dark gray or anything like that. It's the gun sight frame. And if it stands out a little bit from the rest of the combing, cool, I'm good with that. And there we go. The frame, cool.
Okay, swinging back around to the combing, it's time to go ahead and start making this a little bit dirty. And for this, I'm going to bust out my favorites, Guns Mr. Weathering Color, starting with some grayish brown. One thing I love about these is how effective they are at layering. So we're going to start with this. Just kind of get it all over the place. Places where you would expect some crud to kind of build up. So, something like that. Then smash it into the, into the bench here, and set the smaller brush aside, get one of these big fluffy fuckers, and just blend. So now it's slightly dirty, but nothing super filthy, because, you know, this is still a multi-million dollar jet. Next, I'm going to come in and add a little bit of some multi-gray, which is that color. Okay, so, looking like that. And again, with the big Mr. Softy. Come on, focus on this thing, not my fingers. And I'll let that sit a minute and we'll come back to it. Okay, now that the gray has had a few moments to dry up, we're going to go ahead and do one of my favorite tricks with this Guns Mr. Weathering Color stuff, which is grab some of the stuff on the rim here. It's a little tiny bit thicker. And we're basically going to use that as this little brush. And just kind of place some more targeted grime. Okay, so now we've got a nice grungy looking instrument panel combing. Kind of grime buildup going on there. Give it a few minutes to chill out and then we will clear coat it. Now to get the silver on the side of the gun sight here, I'm going to be using Tamiya's LP11 silver because even though it is a lacquer, it actually brush paints pretty nicely. It certainly brush paints better than their own acrylics, which is curious. And we also need to go ahead and bop the other side with a little bit of silver too.
Okay. And then in a minute, we'll clip this off, touch up the end, and then we'll be good to go to mount this once the rest of it is clear coated. Okay, next, we need to go ahead and paint that little tiny area in there where the gun sight projector sits. And so I'm going to start out with some Liquitex acrylic black ink. The thing I like about this stuff is it stays exactly where you want it to go, which is always super useful. So we're just going to slowly walk it in here. Nothing fancy, let that dry for a few minutes. Okay, now to go ahead and paint that little projector in the center of the gun sight projector piece. And for this, I'm gonna be using some Vallejo Metal Color Steel. Again, the pictures I found of this show a very dark thing with like a you know clear glass, whatever on top of it. it does not at all match the XF2 that to me would have you paint that. Unfortunately, they, uh, they get most of the stuff right, but not all of it. Let's go ahead and okay, nice and easy. Again, let that dry for a few minutes, then we'll put a clear on it to darken it up and color it up a bit, and then we'll be able to install it. All right, next, before I get too far, I want to go ahead and make sure to deal with this little seam in the top of the canopy parts, as you can see running right there. Now, I know people have bitched about these, and yes, they're annoying, but they're necessary in order to mold a canopy that has this kind of curvature. You know, it actually does as you can see, kind of curve around and actually kind of curve under itself. And you can't pull that off with traditional injection molding. You have to use a slide mold and you have to have a seam. There's pretty much no way around it. And so, you know, personally, I'd rather have the shape of the canopy right and just remove this little seam because it's really a pretty easy procedure. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take a ceramic X-Acto blade. This one part is getting exactly on the line, but it doesn't matter that much. Basically just gonna scrape that line off. This is hard to see from this angle, so yeah. get all of it. Okay, so as you can see, the seam is no more. Now we have a flat spot that needs to be dealt with. Yay us. And there are multiple ways to do this. I know that there's the whole micro mesh sanding go through like 3,000 different grits of, you know, super fine grit sanding cloth or sanding sponge or whatever. And it just takes forever. Another way to do it is with one of these tri-grit sticks. So we've got the rougher side, the less rough side, and the buffing side. So what you want to do here is just very lightly with the more sanding side, just go in and rough this up a bit. The hard part with these canopies is making sure that you get this little tiny bit up here at the top. That's about as close as I'm going to get, I think. And then, once you've got that all in a good spot, yeah, it looks shitty right now, but just wait. Come in with the white side of things, and you go kind of against the grain you were originally sanding with. And you just want to make sure you hit the whole area. Stop occasionally and 
wipe away the sanding dust that you're getting so it doesn't grind in and cause some sort of scratch or something that's going to be impossible to deal with. Or not impossible, but, you know, pain in the ass. Okay, and when you're done with this thing, this should feel really nice and smooth. And then we swap around to the buffing edge of things. And with the buffer, I found what works really well with this is to basically go in sort of an orbital motion. You want to go really slow at first, just kind of working your way along. Stop occasionally, swipe it clear. So you can see it's already looking a lot better. Not perfect, we're gonna have to polish it, but you know, that's the way of these things. Basically it's an exercise in buff, 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 buff at this point. You wanna get this as close as you can to looking perfect with the buffing stick. And we get to a couple places like up here. You might have to move to a 90 degree motion as opposed to the orbital thing. See, it's already looking much better. I mean, it's still got a little bit of cloudiness. If you look at it from the top or to the sides, but that's fine. You're going to get some dust on the inside. Be prepared to, like, wash this thing when you're all done, too, because it's going to have shit everywhere. One of the reasons I'm doing it now is so I can paint the inside and not have to worry about this later. Okay, and then once you've got that to that state... What comes up next is some polishing. So I've got some Novus number no. two polishing paste here. You should just get a Q-tip, dab, dab, dab. And you just, get it onto pretty much anywhere that you've sanded. So we're gonna carry this bit down the side as well. And then, while it's still wet, you want to really work it in with the Q-tip. Just like that. Now we're going to let that sit for a few minutes. Oh, let's go ahead and make sure that that part is adequately covered. We're going to let that sit for a few minutes and dry, and then we'll be back to remove it and see how things look. Okay, now that the canopy has had some time to dry, it's time to get another Q-tip. And basically, we just come in here. Again, orbital motions. And you just remove this stuff. Nice and easy, like. And look at that, we've got a nice, mostly clear canopy. And the cool thing about this stuff is you can use it multiple times. You can do a couple different applications of it. And it won't hurt anything. You can even bring a buffing wheel in if you want. It's, in my experience, mostly overkill, and it just sets you up for mistakes. Which on canopy glass is not a good idea. So, I mean, you can see the that center line is just completely gone now. And the canopy is nice and clear, it's got good specularity. Okay, so next it's time to go ahead and paint the armored glass on the center of the windscreen. Now I know that this stuff isn't really green or, you know, aqua, whatever, 
but from a distance and from angles because of the thickness of the glass, it looks that way. So we need to do something about it. Now, my typical preference for this is to use some Tamiya X22 Clear as sort of a base, and then a few drops of X25 Clear Green, and a few drops of X23 Clear Blue to get a sort of aqua type of color going on. Then I, you know, basically use that little mix and put in a bunch of Mr. Leveling Thinner and call it a day. And the reason the X-22 is in there is that if you just have a few drops of clear green and clear blue and a bunch of Mr. Leveling Thinner, it's super thin and it gets super runny. And so the X-22 basically just gives it some extra body. So you can kind of cheat that way. So if you're like me and you use these tattoo ink cups for things, think of it like, you know, for the ink cup, maybe, I don't know, five drops each of clear blue and clear green, fill the, you know, half of it with X-22 and then top the rest off with Mr. Leveling Thinner. And then you just paint and I've got some Florman there. Fuck. <laughs> that sucks. All right. We're going to have to pause and deal with that. So how about a quick demonstration of dealing with Florm in clear parts after you've already painted on them? Yay. So, Q-tip, a little bit of Mr. Leveling Thinner, just come in and remove that shit, it's looking better, and then come back with your clear mix and you just spray that shit again and there we go some clear green let that dry for a second and then hit it with a few more layers to get a nice slightly deeper tone than that it's really tough to see it on this color because it's overpowered by the masking on the sides here. Okay, next up on the list is dealing with the sill deck, and specifically all the rat's nest of wiring that you see right here and back here. Now, this one's going to be tough to really, really recreate because of the way the canopy mounts, but we can still give the appearance of chaos and messiness. So to do this, I have made a whole bunch of small pieces of lead wire. These are, move this so you can see it, 0.15 inches. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters because, you know, whatever. Probably like 0.4 millimeters or something. And 0.10 inches. Now what we're going to do is just first start glue these fuckers in place. I've also, as you might note, drilled some holes. So here and here, and then back here, right here and here, and then in the rear bulkhead. So we've got some holes there, everything's happy, and we're ready to just start gluing shit. So to glue the lead wire into place, I'm going to be using some ammo ultra glue. This is basically Ammo's PVA glue. I like it because it really holds well once it cures. It holds better than pretty much anything else I've used. It reminds me a lot of Gator's Grip, but it doesn't have that whole thing that Gator's Grip does where if it's under any kind of tension whatsoever, it'll fuck you. You know, this stuff has a little bit more bite to it at the end of the day. But what we're going to do is literally come in here and see this little connector put some glue on it grab us a piece of lead wire like this and just ram it home 
So we're going to do this first and just place the wires. Nothing too fancy. And honestly, these are probably way too long for what they need to be. But some of them are going to dip down into the pilot station and some of them are going to go into these holes. And so, you know, we need to be able to sort of do both things at the same time. Okay. So, kind of ugly, but I don't give a shit because it won't be seen. Are you fucking kidding me? The rear instrument panel fucking came loose. That isn't the biggest cock punch. If there's one thing about this kit that I really do not like, it is how this little fucker mounts to the sill plate because it's a very tiny little connection and it doesn't hold well with all that jazz. Okay, so I'm going to kind of let this shit dry overnight. Uh, it's getting late anyway, and I need to kind of call it. But I'll let it dry overnight and come back and add some more, and then we'll start painting, routing, and all that good stuff. Okay, now that the lead wire is installed, it is time to paint it. Now, there's a you know school of thought that says route it first, then paint it, but I don't exactly know where I want to be routing everything just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And then we can just touch it up as we need to, because, you know, who cares? For this, I'm going to be using this AK Gen 3 Tenebrous Gray, which is a cool dark gray with like a slight brown-purple type tint. It's just a little bit off from others, other blacks and other dark grays. So it'll give a little tiny subtle separation to the wiring from the sill deck. And it brushes really well. That's one thing I like about these AK Gen 3s. I don't know if they're I don't know if I like them quite as much as I do Vallejo for brush painting, but they're they're close. This is unthin so I can get the body that I want. And I don't have to fuck around with any uh, surface tension bullshit, because they just go on. And I'm sure as I bend these into position and route them and all that, that some of this will flake away, but it's very easy to repair. Just come in and touch it up. This way we can at least get the main, the main shit out of the way, right? Okay, so you get the idea. Let me finish painting these, then we'll start routing. Yay. Okay, so now it's time for wire routing. And this is far from my biggest skill set. <laughs> Uh, many other people do this much better than I do. But we're basically going for a tangled mess on these portions of the sill deck. And if you look at actual reference photos of phantoms, we're going to be nowhere near close to the actual rat's nest that exists back here. But we're going to do what we can. So, start with this one. And some of these, like these ones sticking up back here, uh, they actually need to go down into the cockpit. So we're going to have to wait until we put this in before we can do that. But I want to get the other stuff routed because working around the pilots and the ejection seats will be a huge pain in the ass. So let's get what, what we can get done done while it's still off the model, right? Okay, so I'm going to start with this one right here. This one needs to bend pretty sharply so it doesn't interfere with the lift for the canopy. Let's see if we can do this without knocking the rear panel. Fuck. This thing is such a pain in the ass. Sorry, if there was one thing I could change about the Tamiya Phantom, it would be a much beefier mounting situation for that thing. Let's see how far we can push this. that one running across and I'm going to kind of 
invert it and put it down into this hole here or I might put that one into the cockpit we'll see this one this will be interesting because it is just literally barely glued in place Do there. I'm just going to sort of drop in behind the pilot. If you know, we should probably keep that up for now. Okay, so we've got that stuff looking like that. Now let's grab the F4 and really go to town. <sighs> okay. This was tricky when I was doing it without the wiring on it. get this in real fast it's that console and the pilot don't like each other very much or sorry the Wizzo Rio whatever don't like each other very much okay there we have it got the deck plate sitting there now everything is pretty happy what you're gonna do is like we're gonna grab this little cable right here we're just gonna run it down behind seat. We're going to trim that piece just a little bit. I'd love to glue this thing in a little bit tighter, but I don't want to mess up all that stuff I've got going on. And the cool thing is once this piece goes in place it's going to lock a lot of that down kind of like that especially if I put a little bit of squeeze into it as I do it I think that's going to look pretty solid so yay so one really cool feature of the Tamiya kit is the way that the windscreen framing right back here actually sits just at the front. You can kind of see it on this side of the cockpit sill. So you don't need to glue this in because this thing will lock it in from the front. These little clips on the back kind of lock it in back here at the rear bulkhead. And again, that mid piece will lock it in right here. So pretty much you're covered all around. Um, I'm not entirely thrilled with this little gap right here but it's not that big of a deal I guess we'll see it may be the thing where I'm like fuck when I get to the end of it but uh I don't know I think it'll be okay especially once that middle piece goes in and we can kind of get a good glue connection right there in the center but now we have a little bit of lead wire touch-up to do so I've got my tenebrous gray AK Gen 3 stuff back out and I'm not really diluting it this time but we're just gonna get in here and just do a few touch-ups where the paint got chipped away as we were routing it restore it to that nice 
machine. We basically don't want to give away that these are, in fact, metal. Okay, I'm going to try to do something a little bit frisky here with this. I'm going to take this piece that we just installed. Trim a little bit off of it. Where's my black CA? Okay, a little bit of black CA on the tip of that thing. Now I am just going to very gently touch it in there. So with that, I'm going to call the wiring shit mission accomplished. Okay, now it's time to get to masking. And for this, I'm using the Edward T-Face set, which has masks for both the outside and the inside clear parts. So I've already gone ahead and done the weeding of these masks, which basically means taking all of the surrounding masking stuff and just peeling it away and leaving the actual masking bits themselves. So to start... I always start with the center, just because it's the... It's always the diciest one to me. A little bit of detacking on my hand, especially because I don't know what the deal is, but the... Uh, this particular Tamiya kit, the canopy plastic, seems soft for some reason. Kind of get it... Get it in position. Edward's usually pretty good about these things fitting nicely. If you don't get it, just lift it up and try again. I think what happened there is I went a little bit off-center. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can move on to the sides. These are the parts where I really appreciate having pre-cut masks because, good lord, it is hard to cut these particular curves and angles. For this next one, I've gone ahead and just put a little slice in it. So I can focus on the top and bottom a little bit easier. Okay, so there's one side masked up. Basically, we repeat this around the windscreen. So let me finish up the windscreen and I'm gonna get the other things placed as well on the outside and then we'll cover off what the inside looks like. Okay, so now that the outside is masked, it's time to turn around and do the inside. This works exactly the same. Now, the only thing that I think really matters for masking the inside is making sure that when you mask, you're not going to be painting where you have visible, yeah, see like that just went off the rails. You basically don't want to put paint where there's transparency on the outside. So if you get it a little bit off and you're painting stuff on the outside that can show through to the inside, no biggie. Just make sure you paint it the interior color first. And it'll all be close enough. Same's not exactly true if you get it wrong in the other way. Because you could have 
you know, some black in here showing through kind of around where the gold gray is supposed to be. And that's nobody's, nobody likes that. It's not fun. Okay, and here is everything masked, both inside and out. Next up, we need to put some liquid frisket right there. So for this, I'm going to use some of this Mr. Hobby Masking Sol Neo. This stuff, I very much need a new bottle, but it's still at least it's functional. challenge with the inside is doing it and not getting shit everywhere. Okie doke. So that is masking canopies with Edward masks and some guns, Mr. Masking Saul. Next it's time to start painting. Okay, so everything is masked up and ready to go, and now it is time to put some paint on the clear parts. And I'm going to start with some MRP Night Camo Black, because this is what I used for the sill deck and for the interior bits that glue into the frames and all that stuff. So we want to keep it consistent. And for this, I'm going to put it both on the inside and the outside. it over here. It's much more opaque on the inside than it is over here, which is why we're spraying black on the outside as well. Okay, I'm going to call that guy done. Now we can move on to the middle portion. A lot of this is rinse and repeat. So let me spray all the black and we'll be right back. Okay, now it's time to move on to some dark gunship gray to start adding some color to the outside of the canopy. So let's start with the diciest of them. The tricky part here is I don't want to spray the black border. So I've got to be extra super careful. Next up is some clear doped linen to really lighten this up. This one's probably a bit of a waste because I'm gonna have to repaint some of this stuff when I glue it in. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make sure this guy gets a little bit of treatment too, shall we? And damn, do I need to clean my airbrush out. Alright, next up we're going to do some PRU Pink. It's kind of a brownish Pepto-Bismol type shade. Not pink properly, but it's a very red pink. Or very red tan, shall we say. So. Ok, 
and basically just introducing more shit into the mix. And now it's time to bring in some light gold gray. And there we have it. The canopy sprayed with the outer colors. This will be picked up with some additional weathering and things like that. And I also want to check and make sure that we don't have any stencils that need doing in here. And then we'll be ready to wrap up, I hope, this installment. Okay, now that I've got the canopies painted, it's time to go ahead and flat coat the inside. I'm not quite done with the outside yet, I don't think. But I want to go ahead and get the inside done so I can at least mount the windscreen, if nothing else, right? And so for this, MRP matte varnish. Because this inside is a little bit shiny. We don't want it to be shiny. Yippee. Now, I'm not quite ready to unmask the other one yet, but we can go ahead and unmask this fucker. Okay, so this time out, we're gluing from two different directions. First of all, we've got the rear deck piece that goes in right here. Just like so. Gotta love how these Tamiya kits fit together, right? And then up front, we've got the windscreen. Move this back just a bit. Windscreen is a very nice drop in fit. Sits like that, pushes down. And that's all she wrote. Okay, and there we have it, the rear deck and the windscreen installed. Now let's go ahead and do a few final touch-ups to those 
and a few parts. So one thing I was noticing when I held these up to the fuselage was that edge was dark. You can see it over here. The lower edge of the canopy frame is a little bit dark, so we're going to basically lighten it up with the splotchiness of the weirdo linen. And next we're back with some PRU pink. Kind of running the running the same playbook again. Just varying up this stuff so we can do some cool things with white gold gray. Okie doke. Swap out again and we'll go back to the light gold gray. Okay, so the core guard is placed, and with that, I think we are in a place to go ahead and call episode 7 a wrap, because at this point, the F4 is pretty much ready for paint. So, yeah, went through a lot of little bullshit getting to this point, but we're finally here. Fantastic. Now, I will note, I do plan to come in and probably in the next day or so, do a bit of weathering and then unmasking of the canopy pieces. But when I film that, I'll probably just hold the footage back and include it with more general weathering of the whole thing because it fits more with that. I just want to honestly get to a point where I have the masking stripped off of that and I don't have to worry about it and stress about it. And all I have to stress about is the masking up here. But yeah, that is part seven, getting the F4B to the point where it is ready for all the fun colors. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if you want to get access to these videos a bit early, as well as, you know, some exclusive looks at things and whatnot, even though I haven't been as active there as I should be, uh, my Patreon is always available at patreon.com slash dukesmodels. And until next time, catch y'all later.